the project manager and at project management in PRINCE2. We'll look at the main project variables and some aspects of how to control them and also at the structure of PRINCE2. We'll quickly review some other elements of OGC guidance. OGC is the Office of Government Commerce in the UK and then we'll look at both what PRINCE2 does not provide and at some of the main benefits of PRINCE2. Let's start by looking at some of the things that a project manager does. One of the most important things is to prepare the plan for the project and the plan involves doing what we call specialist work. Specialist work will depend on the type of project so if you are building a building specialist work would be things like designing the building or laying the foundations or laying the bricks or putting the roof on it. Even if the project manager can do the specialist work on a project it is not the project managers role to do it. So the project manager basically delegates the specialist work to other people. Now in practice it's actually not that unusual for a project manager to do some of the specialist work but that's not really what the project manager is there to do. So an ability to delegate is an essential skill for a project manager. Once the work is delegated and the work is underway the project manager monitors progress on the work against the project plan and the project manager will react to the progress against the plan. So for instance the project manager might spot opportunities to reduce costs or to speed things up. The project manager also needs to be able to take corrective action in the event of issues arising. And very importantly the project manager must make information available to other people. The project manager needs to keep various people, the people we collectively refer to as the stakeholders, informed about progress on the project. So figure 1.1 in the manual basically shows you how this cycle works in project management. The project manager makes a plan and then delegates the work in the plan monitors progress against that work and exercises control which often means having to take actions to get things back on track when things are going wrong. And then subject to monitoring and control the project manager will then do further planning perhaps for a later stage of the project and again go into the same cycle once more and in a typical project this cycle will be repeated several times. Now I've already mentioned control, what will the project manager be controlling? Well they'll be controlling what we call the project variables. Costs, so what is the budget for this project and are we keeping to it? Time scales, when should it be finished and is it on schedule? Quality, are the project's products fit for purpose? Scope, what will the project deliver? Are we making all of the things that we're supposed to be making? Risk. How much risk are we prepared to accept in the project? And benefits. Why are we doing this? Why is this project taking place? Now basically this list of six items is one you need to remember because these are the main project variables and we need to control these. In fact PRINCE2 is an integrated framework of processes and themes that addresses the planning, delegation, monitoring and control of all these six aspects of project performance. Cost, timescale, quality, scope, risks, benefits. That's a list you need to remember. Now let's look at the structure of PRINCE2. PRINCE2 comprises a set of seven principles and these are the guiding obligations and good practices that need to be followed on a PRINCE2 project and all seven of these principles need to be applied. We'll be looking at the principles a little bit later on. PRINCE2 also has seven themes 
and the themes are seven aspects of project management that must be applied throughout a project. There is then a set of processes which are the steps in the project life cycle for a PRINCE2 project and finally tailoring PRINCE2 to the project environment and this is how we apply the PRINCE2 framework to any type of project in pretty much any type of environment. Now figure 1.2 in the manual gives you a good idea of the structure of PRINCE2. At the base we have the PRINCE2 principles, on top of that we have the seven themes and then within the structure we have the PRINCE2 processes, the actual steps in running and managing a PRINCE2 project. Now one other thing to mention here is the OGC guidance, the Office of Government Commerce in the UK. PRINCE2 is actually part of a suite of guidance originally provided by the Office of Government Commerce in the UK, OGC. And this guidance covers not just projects but also programs and business as usual for services. Now you won't actually be asked any questions in the exam on material outside PRINCE2 but it is important to understand how PRINCE2 fits into OGC best practice guidance. And if you look at figure 1.3 in the manual, it basically shows you the structure of the OGC best practice guidance. You can see on the left the models, what's called the P3M3 model, Portfolio Program and Project Management Maturity Model. And then below that the PRINCE2 Maturity Model. And then you have the guides on the right, you have Portfolio Program and Project Office. Gateway, MOR which is Management of Risk and ITIL that you may well have heard of. Now within those you have the Portfolio Guide, PFM, MSP which is Managing Successful Programs and PRINCE2 for Project Management. So operating at the Portfolio level, the Program level and the Project level you have Portfolio Guide, MSP and PRINCE2.